Katie is in the news again for stating, you know, and I'm paraphrasing, I'm not here and I'm not, I'm not motivated by winning championships and rings because those are man-made things. I'm worried about more about my legacy. Now, I think you and I both know that's bull, but I want to get your thoughts on that comment that he made. Okay, two things. One, that's cap. Two, that doesn't even make sense because rings and all of that are what build your legacy as an NBA player. Unless you're just talking about your legacy as the man, Kevin Durant, but then that wouldn't make sense. If you're talking about your legacy as a basketball player, then it's those rings that are going to add on to that. One. And two, whether you want to admit it or not, you're in competition with two guys, LeBron James and Stephen Curry. You're in competition with LeBron James because you want to be looked at as the best out right now. You're in competition with Steph Curry because you want the love that Steph Curry received in Golden State. So, yeah, you got rings, and it sounds good, but you weren't loved and adored the way they love Steph Curry, and that ate at Kevin Durant. So now, you know, you're in Brooklyn, you got a chance to do it, and he can do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, because, I, you know, I think when he's fully healthy, he's the number two player in the in the NBA. But we're not going to sit up here and act like, like you don't want rings. So like, what are you playing ball for then? If you don't want to win, like you got enough money. So you might as well retire. KD. Yeah. It, it, KD to me is dealing with a level of insecurity that I don't think any of us really understand it. And it's true because like you said, talent wise, I mean, there's only one guy in the conversation with him and that's yeah. LeBron James. There's let's not fool ourselves. No matter where you rank them, it's, LeBron KD or KD LeBron and then everybody else right and is and, and the league is full of great players but those are one a and one b in the league but he contradicted himself in a statement because he also said that he thought winning that championship in Golden State that first one would have brought him more joy and, and and would have kind of filled the void that he was searching for within the game so you went there thinking I need championships to solidify my legacy as you just mentioned Trip. You win a championship, but you were never adored the way that other stars are because everyone still viewed it as, well, you, you took the shortcut. Yeah, you were the best player, but they were clearly the best team and they had already won a championship before you, so they didn't need you to win a championship. So now we're not going to adorn you with these flowers and gifts as if you have clowned Mount Everest and done something that no one else has ever done. He left Golden State for that reason. As you said, he was never adored. He was never viewed as the franchise player. And he was never going to be the guy in Golden State. It was always going to be viewed as Steph's team. And so don't tell me that rings and, and trophies aren't what you're chasing. Because if that was the case, you wouldn't have teamed up with Kyrie and then recruited James Harden to come to Brooklyn. You wouldn't you, have gone to Golden State in the first place if that was the case. Right. You 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 could have, if, if, if you feel that rings aren't what you're trying to prove to everybody, that you're just trying to prove that you're the highest skilled player to ever play the game, then you don't need another, you don't need a super team. You just need to be on a team and just ball out because at, at the end of the day, if that's not what you're chasing and we know, and again, we know that to be false because that's what every elite player is chasing. Every elite player is looking for the opportunity to cement their legacy, not only with stats, but with the rings to back up the stats, right? As great as Zach Levine is, ain't nobody going crazy that Zach Levine just dropped 50 points the other night. Yeah. And because that ain't champ. As great as he is, he's an all-star caliber player. Ain't nobody saying, wow, Zach Levine is etching his name in the, in the history books as one of the greatest guards ever. Nah, we not. Yeah. Right. Because he ain't doing it in the playoffs and he ain't playing for titles. Right. Chris Paul is already a, a first ballot Hall of Famer. But why you think Chris Paul wanted to go to Houston to team up with Harden and now go to Phoenix to team up with Booker and Aiden? Because he's trying to get a ring to cement his legacy. Like I said, KD is dealing with a certain level of insecurity that none of us really understand. And we may never understand until he stops playing. But all this, I'm not chasing championship, is bull. It's bull. You wouldn't be recruiting the guys you're recruiting to Brooklyn if you didn't want to win a championship. Yeah. And, you know, the statement is just flawed all the way around. Because even if you say, all right, if you wanted to prove that you are the most skilled player or you're the best player ever, you can't prove that with two superstars around you. You can't prove that with two superstars or an all-star or however you want to break down Steph Clay and, and Draymond, what they were when Kevin Durant got there. You can't, that's not how you prove that. 
You would have proved that by staying in OKC and winning a, a, a ring with, with Westbrook. You would have proved that by that. But you don't. You can't team up with other superstars and think that okay, now be just because you're with other superstars and everything is going well, you guys are winning. That that all all somehow elevates you as the greatest thing since sliced bread. It does not work that way. You have to do it, you know, somewhat on your own. Like and you're never going to prove that point in Brooklyn now, because this is not even like when you. You're talking about now. You're talking about two bona fide superstars next to you. So that that's how first battle Hall of Famers. Yeah, like you had a better chance at least <laughs> maybe in Golden State. And we all know they were already the best team in the league. But you probably had a better chance of proving it with that team than this one because you're talking about Harden, who's an MVP, uh, Kyrie, who's a, who's an NBA champion already. Then you add you throw in Aldridge, Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan, and all these other guys. You can't even prove that on this team. So Listen, you make no sense. Th- there was a stat that Jeff Van Gundy put out yesterday during the game. Kevin Durant missed 24 or 23 games with this, this injury. Yeah. Right? During that time, obviously, they had Harden and Kyrie played for the majority of that time. In those 24 games, their record was something like 19 and 5. How are you enhancing your legacy when this team clearly could have already been the number one seed without you? Yeah. yeah. This team, like realistically, if, if you go 19 and five in 24 games, that puts you on elite level as, in terms of team competition, right? Yeah. Teams don't, teams just don't go 19 and five over a 24 game stretch unless they're already really good. Yeah. So, and the how are, go 19 and, and five if LeBron missed that many games? Not at all. Exactly. Not at all. <laughs> Un- unless, again, unless it's a stacked team where you have. Yeah a former MVP, an NBA champion, and former All-Stars who now are filling in as role players. Yes. Then, yeah, you have a shot. But again, that that weakens your argument. As you said, it's a flawed argument because the team is so good. How are you enhancing your legacy? Yeah. Or you're just proving to us. And I, and I hate to put it this way for Katie because I love his game. But you're proving to us, again, that you need the, the odds stacked in your favor yes. to be this good. Yeah, absolutely. If it was just about legacy, you could have stayed in OKC. Yeah. You didn't have to leave Russ. That's the thing. If, because, so, and, and you, what you're saying, you might actually be absolutely right because it's, you know, Kevin Durant was a great player in OKC. He was one of the top uh, players in basketball. However, when it came down to playoff time and, and making them late runs to the playoffs, you know, it wasn't like Kevin Durant was out here making sure they got after the first when they went to the chip. But after after that, the last couple of three years, Kevin Durant wasn't doing nothing spectacular and getting them to the finals. And matter of fact, you stunk up the joint when 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 y'all was up three games to one in the series, and them last two games, you stunk it up. You know what I'm saying? So you can't have it. You can't have it both ways. And then you tuck tail and, and, and you ran out of there. So nah. This is Kevin Durant being typical Kevin Durant capping, as always. You know, like, nah, bro, I'm sorry. You cannot have it both ways. You can't, you, you're talking this legacy, talking it's not about rings and chips. Yes, the fuck. Oh, excuse me. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we know. We already know, man. It's all cap. I'm gonna fuck us. This is your African King's coming, Michael Blackson. You watching real friends, real talk. Get real with it, my son.